Hello, today the Sainsbury Book of Trees, which is a Sainsbury and Walker books book. Information book, not story time today. I thought we'd do a little bit of non-fiction for once uh, by Rupert Matthews and Simon Burr. Inside cover. Inside cover at the back is another picture of an animal. So we have a woodpecker at the front and a squirrel at the back. Let's get to the title page. No, nope, I've gone too far. Here we are, title page, see what we can learn. Well, we learn that the book here says somewhere it was published in 1992, which is nearly 30 years ago. A long time ago. Still, trees are trees and they haven't changed much and we still need to look after them. So, the book of trees, which is written by Rupert Matthews and illustrated by Simon Burr. First we get to beautiful illustration and table of contents which I'm going to try and read as I'm showing it at the same time. <clears throat> so the great thing about information books, non-fiction, is that they usually have a table of contents. Um, which tells you what pages you need to go to if you don't really feel like reading the whole book in one go, but you are interested in certain topics in particular, therefore you would like to just go straight to that. For example, um, a read about nuts on pages 20 and 21, or read about the amazing facts right at the end of the book, pages 30-31. So let me read this for you. Six, seven, what is a tree? Eight, nine, the first trees. 10, 11, coniferous trees. 12, 13, deciduous trees. 14, 15, tropical rainforests. 16, 17, life in a tree. 18, 19, the tree grows up. 20, 21, nuts. 20 and 23, orchards. 24, 25, logging, 26 to 27, recognizing trees, 28, 29, destruction of the forests, pages 30 and 31, amazing facts. So first heading here is what is a tree, pages 6 and 7, just like it said in the table of contents. What is a tree? Trees are tall plants which grow a trunk and branches. They live through the winter and increase in size every year, until they reach over 6 metres in height. Shrubs are similar, but they grow many stems from the base and are often much smaller than 6 metres. So here's your illustration. And it says here, what tables that little word? There. So let's see what this illustration is about. Trees push their roots into the soil to collect the water and minerals which help them grow. In most places, the water table is less than two meters below the surface. So that is what this dotted line indicates. I'm just going to show you how far it goes. And there you go, it says water table. Tree roots usually spread out far beyond the span of the branches above ground, as you can see here. In towns and cities, strong roots can sometimes damage the foundations of buildings. And we have several boxes here, which I'm going to try and zoom on if possible. I'm going to fold back the book so I can hold it better. Here we are, leaves. The branches of a tree grow small shoots which bear leaves. These contain green chlorophyll which makes food out of sunlight to feed the plant. The trunk supports the branches and leaves. It carries water up from the roots and food down from the leaves. 
So this is a nice cross section you've got here, a vertical cross section of the trunk. And here we have roots, I believe. Let's read this. The roots hold the tree firmly in the ground and supply the plant with water and minerals. Here we are. The first trees. Oh, no, it's not a book about dinosaurs. <laughs> but these are beautiful pictures of dinosaurs. You might want to copy them. Don't let anyone make you feel bad about copying pictures in books because that is how you learn at the end of the day. If you want to learn to draw dinosaurs, go for it. The first trees. Now I'm going to fold it back again so it's easier to handle for me and get to the right page. The first trees grew on Earth about 280 million years ago. A long time to take in that. They were conifers, something like modern redwoods and cypresses. The earliest flowering trees, such as oaks, elms and birches, grew some 200 million years later. So that would be how many years ago? Can you work it out? Look at the numbers. 280 million years. 200 million years. Yes, 80 million years. Well done. At that time, the last of the giant dinosaurs roamed the earth, eating leaves from these flowering trees. So here we have one. What is he called? The Polacanthus. And here we have the Pteranodon. And here, no, it's not a T Rex. Look, it doesn't have those great big teeth and the fierce look. It is a, an Iguanodon. The ancestor of the iguana, I imagine. And here we move on to the next heading, coniferous trees. Look at these lovely animals, snow animals. And we have some interesting labels on the side to read in a minute. So let's start with this paragraph, quite a big paragraph. Pines and fir trees are described as conifers. Pines have long, narrow leaves, called needles, and their seeds ripen in cones in the late summer. Millions of years ago, conifers grew in warm, fertile areas. But when the more advanced deciduous trees appeared, they were crowded out and forced to adapt to poorer soils and colder climates. Coniferous trees have flexible branches and are cone-shaped with the point upwards. This ensures that heavy snow slides off easily and does not break the branches. Today, vast coniferous forests stretch across the colder parts of Northern Europe, Asia and Canada. They are the homes of the home of many creatures such as wolves, hares, deer and owls. Let's have a look at them. Here's a deer. It's a special deer from Canada called caribou. Here's the Arctic hare. Let me show this better. I'm going to open the page so it's easier. The Arctic hare. And a little friend. Here we have the wolf and the if I can read snowy owl. And then on this page we have these side labels in the margin. That's a margin on the side. 
Here are examples of the different shaped cones you might see on coniferous trees. So this one is from a Douglas fir. This one is from a Scots pine. This one from a hemlock. This one from a Norway spruce. This one is from a redwood. And this one from a cedar. They're quite large and chunky, those. I like the tree. Here we come to the heading, the page on deciduous trees. Lush, look at that. Deciduous trees such as oaks, sycamores, chestnuts, beeches, aspens and maples lose their leaves in the autumn. Before, mm, before the leaves fall, the tree takes back into the branches the green chlorophyll which makes food. Other sugary chemicals are left which then show as yellow and later bright colours of red and purple. If the leaves did not turn and then fall in this way, valuable chlorophyll would be damaged by winter frosts. There are deciduous forests in Europe and in parts of Asia and North America. Here we are. And on this page we have boxes of information, each little paragraph, a small, small paragraph, it's almost like a caption for those illustrations in boxes. Box one says, in spring new leaves grow from buds on the twigs. These horse chestnut buds are covered in a sticky substance to stop insects eating them. Box two, as the weather grows warmer, the new leaves start to appear. At first they are pale and soft, but soon grow larger and stiffer. Box 3 In late spring, flowers follow the leaves. Box 4 Conkers form inside round prickly cases. These are the new seeds, once the flowers have gone. And box five, the leaves turn in autumn and the conkers fall. You can see the conkers inside the seeds there. And here outside the box, we have an illustration that shows us the scar there. A scar is left on the twig where the leaf has fallen. <clears throat> Tropical rainforests is the heading of this page. The sun is never far from overhead along the equator and for hundreds of kilometres on either side, as you can see on this map. So hundreds of kilometres would go up north that way and south because this dotted line is the equator. The climate here is hot and humid all year round and this is where the tropical rainforest grows. As you can see there's a key here which I'm going to try and zoom on. The key says tropical rainforest and it's the green on the map. So you can see some in how can I do that? Some in Central America and Southern America there. Africa, Central Africa, and Asia, Central Asia. Here we are. Uh, where was I? Rainforests are made up of huge trees which may grow up to 60 meters tall. 
The trees form a thick canopy of leaves and branches which stops sunlight reaching the ground. Well, let's have a look at that. Fold it back so it's easier to handle. Here we are. A picture, a di almost a diagram that shows you the canopy. And if I can read, you read this bit first. The main canopy is at 30 meters. And here, the tallest trees can reach up to 60 meters. So you can see the sky at the top and it's completely hidden, obliterated by the thickness of the canopy. So the light doesn't reach at the bottom. Ooh. Dead leaves and plants rot quickly on the forest floor and the nutrients are taken up by the tree roots where they can enrich the soil. This means that the luxuriant growth of the trees is carried on poor, thin soil. If the trees are felled, the soil becomes dusty and is quickly blown or washed away and new trees cannot grow. Vast numbers of animals like the monkey, snake, jaguar and parrot shown here live in the rainforests feeding on the plant life and on each other. There are more different types of animals in the rainforest than in the rest of the world put together. Think about this. Life in a tree. Lots of life. Lots of inserts here. I wouldn't call them boxes. They're more like um, tags, really. Inserts. Uh, life in a tree. Trees provide food and shelter for many plants and animals. A large tree such as this oak, may be home to a whole community of life forms. And first we have the mistletoe. Mistletoe grows on the higher branches, but it is rarely found on oak trees. It does have green leaves to make its own food, but also takes food from the supporting tree. Can you see, can you spot it in the tree here? Highest branches and it's that ball there. There it is. And next we have birds. Birds such as robins, finches and warblers feed on the insects which live on the tree. Can you spot the robin? It's absolutely tiny. I really had trouble finding it myself. And it's there. I think. Let me check. Yes, that is him. Because I can see it much more close up. And you see its little red marking on the throat and chest. There he is. In the shade of the tree grow bluebells and primroses. Look at them and try and spot them under the tree there in the shade of the tree. Can you see them? Yeah. Here they are. Next page. Ooh, another bird. Now let me handle this so it shows more clearly. <clears throat> Woodpeckers. Woodpe I don't know how to do this. 
woodpeckers, drill holes in search of insect larvae living beneath the bark. They also wedge acorns into cracks so that they can peck at them more easily. How clever is that? Can you spot the woodpecker? spotted it before me, finding it really hard to see with the screen. Insects and leaves, uh, sorry, insects eat leaves and shoots. If they eat too many, the tree may produce a second crop of leaves. I bet you know what this is called, a caterpillar. And honestly, I have tried and tried. I cannot find it in the tree. It's an absolutely tiny creature, so I'm not even sure they've, they've illustrated that on the tree itself. Now we come to this insert. Fungi may grow on the trunk, feeding on dead wood. And that I think we can see. Can you spot them? And finally, squirrels and jays eat the acorns, the seeds of the oak, which are very nutritious for them, not for us. And I'm sure you've spotted the squirrel down there. Right. Here we are, the tree grows up. See if I can do this right. Trees take many years to grow and mature. Most grow in a broadly similar way, though each type has its own characteristics. The sycamore tree is a good example of how many types of deciduous trees develop. So I'm going to fold so I can show you the boxes more closely. Starting here. Sycamore seeds have wings so that the wind can blow them away from the parent tree to new ground where there is room for them to grow. If the seed lands in soft damp ground, it will produce a small root and two leaves. Many seedlings are eaten by animals such as deer and cattle, cows, sheep, goats. In its first year, the seedling uses sunlight for energy and growth uh, and grows about 30, meter, 30 centimeters, one foot. By then, it has a small trunk and a few narrow branches. Here's the grown up tree. After five years, the young sycamore may be about four meters, 13 feet tall, and have many branches and leaves. The trunk holds the leaves high and out of reach of grazing animals. Before it is 20 years old, the tree is large enough to withstand strong winds. It grows flowers in the spring. The flowers produce seeds which are blown away by the wind in the autumn to produce new trees. As it grows taller, the tree also becomes thicker and stronger. Each year a new layer of wood is added to the trunk. If the tree is cut down, these layers show these layers show as rings and can be counted to give the age of the tree. Ooh, it'll take a long time to check how many rings there. So we have a nice different section of the trunk there, cross section, which is horizontal, not vertical.
and here we come to the heading nuts. Nuts. Many trees produce their seeds encased in woody cover. covers. These are called nuts and will grow into trees if placed in damp soil. But they are also nutritious food for animals and humans. Some trees like hazels, walnuts, almonds, sweet chestnuts and pecans are grown specially for their nuts. The nuts are gathered by pickers and taken to market to be sold. So we have a few examples of those trees and nuts. Here we have the hazelnut, the coconut, walnut. And let me read what's in here. Nuts are processed into food and other products. Walnuts are used in cooking oil and coconuts in cosmetics. Shampoo, bath oil. Pecan. Sweet chestnut. Almond. And in the margin here we have another box, quite colourful, which says Most nuts do not grow into trees because they are eaten by animals. They contain important vitamins, fats and minerals. Small nuts are eaten by birds. Middle-sized nuts by squirrels. And large nuts by fallow deer and other animals. Heading here is orchards. Many trees produce juicy fruits such as apples, pears, plums, oranges and peaches. Over the years special types of tree have been selected and bred to produce a bigger harvest of large, tasty and colourful fruits. These trees are planted in large fields known as orchards. Fruit trees are usually planted in long straight rows so that they are easily pruned and picked. Pruned, this is it, cut just a little bit, very carefully. They need to be regularly inspected for disease and are often sprayed to stop insects eating the fruit. They may also need to be pruned to keep them small and to encourage more fruit growth. Fruit trees have been grown in this way since prehistoric times. The ancient Romans were particularly keen fruit growers. And here we have some examples. On this right. Cherry. Apple, banana, peach, apricot, plum, pear. Ooh, logging. Many forests are specially cultivated so that the trees can be used for timber. These forests are planted with coniferous trees because they grow very quickly and produce a lot of wood in a few years. A deciduous tree may take a hundred years to reach a useful size, but it will produce much better quality wood. So timber is wood. Um, trees that are used for wood to make furniture and all sorts. Now I'm going to fold this one. I need to hold it quite close. Um, that's the wrong way. Here we are. 
in a forestry plantation as many as 2,000 seedlings are planted in a hectare. That's 10,000 square meters. A large, large, large area. The first trees are cut young as thinnings to allow the others room to grow. After four or five thinnings, the remaining trees are firmly established and left to grow for some years before being felled. That's cut down. Only about 50 to 100 trees are allowed to grow fully. So 20 seedlings are planted for each tree cut at the final felling. And this is the felling as it happens. Felling for timber. <clears throat> when a tree is harvested, it is cut down by foresters using chainsaws. Then it is sawed into logs which are taken to a sawmill and cut into planks or even smaller pieces for sale. And you may have seen that in DIY stores if you go there with your parents sometimes. Ooh, these pages on recognizing trees. Hold it a bit closer so I fold it back. You can't always fold books back like this safely. I'm really lucky this one is very flexible so I know I'm not going to damage it by doing that. Recognising trees. This is a Scots pine. Sweet chestnut. Beech. Yew. Weeping Willow, Oak, Ash, Holly, Horse Chestnut, London Plain, Lombardy Poplar, Common Lime, Sycamore. Ooh, just a quick note about Common Lime. In France, you find one of these lime trees planted in every school playground, primary schools anyway, um, because lime, the, the pollen, the leaves, everything about the lime, promotes calmness. So it helps the children keep calm on the playground and play beautifully. It's a traditional thing. I'm not sure whether they've carried it on in modern schools, but in every school where I went, a long, 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 long time ago, uh, there was such a tree in the playground. Destruction of the forests. Ah, serious bit. In some parts of the world, especially in South America and Southeast Asia, large areas of ancient forests are being cut down, but no new trees are being planted. Instead, the land is used for farming or cattle ranching, while the trees are sold as timber. This is happening to an alarming extent to the tropical rainforest, where a huge number of different species of trees and animals live. You've probably heard about the plight of the orangutans in Southeast Asia, where they are felling trees and destroying their habitat for palm oil. So that's why nowadays we try to avoid palm oil altogether. Once the trees are cut down, the animals lose their natural homes and hunting grounds and quickly die out. This destruction is beginning to worry a great many people who are now trying to stop such thoughtless devastation. Once the forest is cut down, it can never grow again. So that's why you've probably heard a lot about the orangutans and how we must try our best from where we are. We are very far away, but we can help by not buying products that contain palm oil. And here we have another problem in this box, acid rain. I have good news about this, but I'll read it first. 
Many forests in northern European countries are being damaged by acid rain. This is caused by acidic smoke from power stations and factories which, rise, which rises high into the air and dissolves in rain which then falls on trees. The acid kills their leaves and may eventually destroy large areas of forests. Some governments are now imposing controls on factories to cut down the pollution which causes acid rain. And the good news is, this book is nearly 30 years old and in the last three decades, in the last 30 years, things have happened which have improved the situation greatly. Factories now have to have filters on their chimneys so that the smoke that comes out is not so damaging to the environment. That's why I find reading old books is quite interesting because you can uh, you can talk about the changes that have occurred since it was written. And here we come to our last section in the book, headed Amazing Facts. I'm going to fold it back again so I can hold it a bit closer. Look at this one. Isn't it amazing? The widest tree in the world is a banyan tree in Calcutta. The branches spread out and are supported on downward growing stems. It covers 1.2 hectares, three acres. That is huge. Can you see those stems that support the branches? They grow downwards and touch the roots. When I first looked at the illustration, I thought there were part of the roots growing upward towards the branch, but no, that's the really amazing thing about this tree. It's got parts of it that grow downwards. Stems. They're not branches. They're not roots. They're stems that grow downwards. Here we are. All but 35 of the 2,000 kinds of tree grown in Britain are exotics sent from abroad. And here we have an example. The salmon tree catches rainwater in its branches, then lets it fall on to the root system gradually when the rain has stopped. Mm. And here we have a very interesting fruit. The biggest tree fruit in the world is the coco de mer, or double coconut of the Seychelles Islands. This enormous nut can weigh up to 20 kilos. That's 45 pounds. I think some of you must be about 20 kilos. <laughs> So that is an enormous and very weighty nut. More amazing facts. The fastest growing tree in the world is the Malaysian Albizia. Young trees may grow as much as 10 meters, 33 feet a year. The heaviest timber in the world is South African ironwood. A cubic meter weighs nearly 1.5 tons. Now that's quite big to get your head around. I would say a cubic meter. Think about the meter stick at, at school. Now think about making a cube out of those meter sticks. You'll need uh, six or more to make the net. Just imagine the size of a cube that's made out of those meter sticks. So that volume, that quantity of South African iron wood, <coughs> would weigh nearly 1.5 tons, which would be about oh, half the size of a small car. Now you know how heavy a car is, you would never pick it up and lift it. Even half of that 
you wouldn't be able to. Um, if you were to make a cube out of the meter sticks and fill it with feathers, or a lighter wood, like um, cork, for example, which is very lightweight wood, um, you would be able to lift that up, no problem. But you would not be able to lift it up if it was made of South African ironwood. There, just to give you a rough idea, because it's not always easy to make sense of figures without an example. The most extensive forest in the world is in Northern Asia, where coniferous trees cover about 11,000 million hectares. That's 2.7 billion acres. It's just huge. <laughs> and here we have two illustrations. Let's have a look at this one. It looks dead to me, but let's read. The oldest tree in the world is a bristle cone pine growing in Nevada. It is over 5,000 years old. It grows very slowly and the dead wood never rots in the dry atmosphere. Each cone scale has a prickle 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch long. Ah, that's why it looks dead. The dead parts never rot, so they stay in place. But it's still alive. It just keeps its dead, dead bits. And uh, Nevada, yes, the dry atmosphere is due to the desert, because Nevada is mostly a desert. And as for the prickles, they are quite big. Think about it, 90 millimeters. I would say that's about... Oh, for most people, for children, I would say that's probably the, the width of your thumbnail. So that's quite a um, dangerous prickle. And here we have the last illustration. Looks very tall and it is the tallest tree in the world. It is a coast redwood growing in California, which is 112 meters or 375 feet tall. Some redwoods in California are so large that tunnels have been carved in their trunks, big enough for cars to drive through. So imagine the size of a car going through the bottom of the trunk here in a tunnel. The tallest trees ever, the tallest tree ever was an Australian eucalyptus which was over 140 meters or 460 feet tall. And that's the last of the amazing facts. Here we are. And the squirrel inside cover. Oh, I know, I'll read the blurb as well and finish there. Whether you live in the town or in the country, you will see trees of one kind or another every day. This book gives you the opportunity to discover more about the many different types of trees around the world, from common coniferous and deciduous trees to the huge trees of the tropical rainforests with details on how and where they grow, they, their produce and the plants and animals they shelter. You will also find information about some of the dangers that threaten our forests today and a page full of amazing tree facts, beautifully illustrated in full colour this is the perfect introduction to the wonderful world of trees. So share this video with anybody who loves trees. I hope you've enjoyed having this read to you. It's been a bit of a gymnastic feat, but here we are. I hope it works. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye. Blessings to you all.